Hello, my name's John. I am making this video as a follow-up to a video that I uh, put out a few weeks ago about my TS42 catamaran that was built here in, uh, in Lorient. I'm back in Lorient uh, because I received an invite from the uh, co-founder of Grand Large Yachting to come here to the uh, boatyard that built my boat that they uh, purchased from Marsuden out of liquidation uh, to chat to see if we can uh, uh, find any uh, mutual uh, grounds. I'd uh, reached out previously to uh, Grand Large Yachting and also to the receiver many times. Uh, and uh, previous to the video, I had not received any communication. Now it's possible something might have came eventually, but I uh, am immensely grateful for everyone who watched my first video because I think that probably contributed to getting this meeting off the ground. Anyway, we had a long chat yesterday. It was pretty frank. Uh, and uh, uh, this is uh, the story of that chat. I'm in the uh, Basse des Sumeran of Lorient, the submarine base, the old World War II base. This is uh, Marsuden's yard, or was. It's now uh, Grand Large Yachting's yard. And I want to take some film just to try to show why this place is such an uh, impressive area and the status that uh, goes with having uh, a yard in the center of this place. This is the back of Marsuden's yard, and in fact, their yard extends through three submarine pens behind the uh, Bank Populaire race team, uh, the length of the uh, uh, old submarine pens to here. Changing round to the other side, to the marina, uh, we have their, uh, their boats, uh, that they built or that their clients have in the marina, including the latest one. I'll see if I can zoom into that. That's the uh, 57. And then uh, this is the 50. Behind there's another 50. And over on the uh, far side there's an old 42. But the uh, real status of the place is the association with the race teams of uh, France which are uh, right uh, next door in the marina. So these are the giant Ultime Trimarans, Bank Populaire, Sedebo. I probably need to zoom out so you can see that. Huge, huge boats. And then behind, a few uh, of the latest Class 40 race boats. Normally this place is full of Imokas as well, but they uh, are all out racing at the moment. I think the first point to make is that they were uh, open and listening. Uh, the only people there were uh, the co-founder and one of his team, a guy responsible for uh, communications and PR, I think and uh, they were trying to get to the bottom of this. So there was no intimidation, no lawyers, uh, and it was uh, a constructive meeting. They feel, in my opinion, uh, that uh, I have been unkind to them and unfair to them. Uh, they, uh, their position really is that they bought uh, Marsuden, or rather assets of Marsuden, not the company, and only the assets that were uh, interesting to them. My particular asset was not interesting to them, and so of course they didn't buy it. I think that's a bigger picture about liquidation and French law and whether uh, you can pick out the uh, liabilities like that. But uh, I think probably globally, it's, uh, it's the same everywhere else. And, uh, uh, and that really forms the basis of their view that uh, it's entirely uh, unfair for me to be uh, tying them to this boat. They didn't build it. They uh, weren't responsible for the uh, lies and uh, uh, misrepresentation in the uh, litigation by Marsuden, and uh, they don't own my asset. The second point they make is that uh, the former owner, although he is employed as a uh, consultant, he has no power to make decisions and uh, he is not uh, a key member of uh, Grand Large Yachting. And uh, uh, the third point was that they are keen to try to find some sort of resolution. So uh, they uh, effectively are uh, looking to do something like uh, offer to repair the boat at cost, 
were I to be able to get the boat back from the receiver. I explained that uh, my problem is that the receiver has my boat and that he won't talk to me and tell me uh, whether he has the funds to uh, ever pay me back and so it's impossible for me to make a, uh, an assessed decision uh, with all the facts uh, about whether to take my boat back or whether to hold out and try and force the receiver to pay me from the funds. So they undertook to try uh, through their own uh, uh, means to try and find that uh, information to help me to make a good choice and then if we end up with the boat uh, they uh, um, are looking to try and find some sort of solution perhaps where we repair the boat at cost uh, here uh, on my, uh, uh, um, as a, a sign of good faith. Of course for me that carries a lot of risk, it's the yard that built the faults in the first place, albeit eight years has passed since then and a lot of turnover has happened in the workforce. And uh, understandably uh, people feel hurt here about the video and I'm not the most popular person in Lorient. So uh, uh, there's some way to go to discuss that and uh, decide whether for me that's uh, a risk that I want to do. But what I would say is that I intend to video uh, blog the, uh, the repairs if I keep the boat, whether that be here or whether that be elsewhere. I've been to the GREF of the Lorient Tribunal de Commerce. I think we translate that perhaps as registry or secretary uh, to ask some questions to try to find out what's going on. I'd previously received a document that suggested that the uh, the debt of Marsudan Composites uh, had two bank loans and myself, and the total for the two bank loans was uh, 470. Uh, of course, against that, the uh, receiver has the sale proceeds, and the sale was just over 1.5 million. So I asked about that document uh, and uh, uh, to try to get an update, and the ladies inside were very kind, and they explained uh, that there are two documents. Uh, the document that I have is the register of uh, interests, if you like, uh, uh, which was me and these two banks. Uh, but there is a second document, which is the current state of those debts. And uh, the current state of those debts, they don't have that document because the receiver has not placed it with the, uh, with the GREF yet. Uh, six months has gone by, so I find it surprising that he hasn't done anything yet to update uh, people on the situation but that is the situation. So I asked uh, what's the difference between the, uh, uh, the state of the debts and the, uh, the register of the debts. Uh, and the difference simply is that the state of the debts will include things that uh, were not previously notified, like perhaps unpaid tax or the salaries of the workers if Marsudan didn't pay them. And, uh, and these figures need to be included. And of course, those would sit ahead of me. So there's potential that the total debt does exceed the 1.5 million uh, that the receiver has at least um, if, uh, if those debts are significant and uh, it's uh, uh, difficult for me to know what to do. I, I asked their advice and of course their advice was get uh, the, um, my lawyer to write to the receiver and ask him for uh, information. Well, of course, we've been doing that for six months and he's not talking to us. Or that I could write to the receiver and of course I've done that as well and he's not talking to us. Uh, their final advice was get a uh, lawyer with a specialization in liquidation. So uh, maybe I'll add to my uh, legal uh, uh, team, if you like, my, my sole lawyer by getting a, another who can advise on the specializations of liquidation. But uh, I can't deny that I find it intensely frustrating that I have to uh, uh, that the receiver who's responsible for looking after the creditors uh, is basically not looking after me in any way and I have to employ a lawyer with specialization in liquidation to force him to actually do his job and look after this particular creditor uh, just as I think it's uh, really sad that it seems that you have to employ a surveyor to uh, watch the the build of your boat because the ICNN are not doing their job. Of course, I've written to them again uh, prior to publishing this video uh, and, uh, and since public publishing this video, uh, the first video rather, and uh, they have not responded. Of course, why would they? I'm uh, at the offices of FIDES. FIDES is the, uh, the society that the receiver works for. The receiver is a guy called Bernard Kaur. And uh, he is the guy who has my boat. It's uh, now registered in 
uh, Marsuden Composites name, and he is the guy in charge of Marsuden Composites now. I, um, he also has all of the money from the sale of Marsuden Composites, and he has uh, any money that he would have seized from their bank accounts when it was uh, put into liquidation. What I'm trying to find out is whether he is going to uh, pay me. I've called his office twice this morning. Um, both times I got the answer phone which said what a wonderful uh, office they are uh, and then uh, it uh, hung up on me. So I've turned up in person, I've been in and I've spoken to his uh, secretary. Uh, she won't tell me anything. She basically uh, won't explain the process, uh, won't even tell me if Mr. Core is in the office, won't tell me uh, if I can make an appointment with him. She simply says I need to email him or my lawyer needs to email him. Now, of course, my lawyer has already emailed him many times and I've emailed him many times and uh, we've had uh, no information back. I had expected to have some sort of legal threat or technicality to be the response to my first video, because this is what the former owner did in 2018 when I tried to tell the story. Grand Large Yachting did not do that. And even now they are asking me to add to my first video rather than take it down. When I arrived at their yard in Lorient, I expected Xavier Desmarest, the co-founder of Grand Large Yachting, to be accompanied by lawyers, because meetings that I attended with the former owner were always that way, whether I was alone or not. But actually, he had only brought a communications guy with him. I'm no expert about build quality, obviously because I bought this boat, but the openness of Xavier Desmarest and his team and their willingness to show what they have seems impressive to me and unusual. They seem genuinely proud of their processes and their team and wanted to understand my side of the story. I think it's brave to invite someone as openly hostile as me to film more. For me, that shows integrity. I was given a tour of the yard by an Outremer quality guy called Christophe. He was brought in to ensure that Outremer standards are achieved in Lorient not only with the Outremer 45 boats, but also with the ORC boats that they continue to build. I can see some processes that seem very different to my memory of how things were when Sam Marsuden built my boat. But as I've said, I'm no expert. What do you think? I'm judging them on their integri integrity and openness because I don't have the technical expertise to make a proper examination of their engineering practices. A lot of folk commented on the similarities to Colin's Parley story. Like most of you, I watched his videos with horror and I was amazed at Colin's strength and the calm, fair, reasoned approach, despite the awful stress he must have been under. In some ways, he has been an inspiration, but my memory was that no cameras were allowed during the visit that he made to the Beneteau Group Yard. I'm going to meet Thomas at the factory and... We're going to go from there, but he's requested that I don't film anything. I just want to... So I wonder if the similarities are more about certification. I recently delivered a boat from Beneteau Group across the Atlantic, and it didn't say either in the manual or on the plaque who certified it. I wonder if it was the ICNN. I wonder why they wouldn't state who certified it. I feel that the Grand Large Yachting guys are more open and more brave. They seem to genuinely believe that their story is one to be proud of. On my trip home yesterday, Grand Large Yachting sent me the figures that they had obtained from the receiver. Their lawyers had achieved what I had not been able to do with my sole lawyer in seven months of trying. I watched Xavier Desmarest call his lawyers hourly, and I know he personally spoke to the receiver the previous evening. It may not seem like much, but this single act is everything to me. I had gambled my boat to force the receiver to one day show me the figures, and I knew I might well end up with nothing. I've watched my wife in tears more times than I want to remember. It has been an extremely unpleasant seven months. I am so grateful to Xavier Desmarest for the time and effort that he put in to achieve this. So it turns out that the receiver does actually have the funds and with the usual caveats, I may end up being paid my money back. I am only in this position because several years ago, my lawyer had the vision to foresee the possibility that this might all happen and apply to the court for privileged credit status. Our student opposed it, of course, but we won in court. 
Without that foresight, I would be below the cut for payment like so many other creditors. If forced to choose between the black and white positions of an eight-year-old boat with no keels, no rudders, etc., or the repayment of the purchase price, then of course I am forced to take the repayment. But I hope that there will be a way to find a middle ground by which I can take a smaller sum from the receiver and keep the boat. Xavier Desmarest has enabled that possibility by put, putting me on a level playing field with the receiver. So what do you think? Am I nuts to uh, think that the yard that built all of these faults could possibly repair them correctly with, uh, with good quality? My basis for this belief is simply the integrity that Xavier Desmarest showed and his conviction in uh, the quality of his team. I think the repair journey with Grand Large Yachting in Lorient could be a really interesting story. If I can get the boat back, would you be interested in a repair series? There are lots of boat fixing videos out there already, but this would be a professional industrial player showing how they do it and exposing themselves to open view. And it's an interesting boat, lightweight with thin uh, walls to the hulls, tabbing in new uh, repairs will be, uh, will be difficult. Of course, there would be some wider story potentials, such as the views of people who work there, or general interests, such as how am I going to get a boat with no keels and no rudders and several holes in the hulls down the river from its current storage yard to the ORC yard in Lorient. I don't know when all this might happen because the receiver clearly still has my boat. It may be weeks, maybe months, it may be never. But uh, if you're interested in that, please consider subscribing and uh, that way, hopefully, you'll find out when it comes out. Finally, a sincere thank you to everyone who watched that first video. It is you guys who have enabled this progression for me.